All praises to the Most High. So, tonight's topic again um, is called Understanding Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Romans 3, verse 23. Okay, let's read that. Romans 3, verse 23. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23. Go ahead. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Read it again. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23. Mm -hmm. For all have sinned have come, and come short of the glory of God. This scripture right here, this is the scripture that is used in the Christian church. To just, our people use this, this verse right here to justify breaking God's laws. To justify breaking the commandments of the Most High God. That you don't have to keep the law. We are not under the law, but we are under grace. Because for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. They use this verse right here to justify sin. Now, let's see who are the Romans. Give me Romans 1 verse 1. Romans chapter 1 verse 1. Who was the apostle Paul writing to? Okay, read that. Romans chapter 1 verse 1. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Read. Which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So he says, which he had promised afore, meaning in the past, by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So the Apostle Paul was given the gospel of the uncircumcision. All that, give me the book of Galatians 2, verse 6 and 7. Let's get there. We're coming back here. Galatians 2, verse 6. Okay, read that. The book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 6. Mm -hmm. But of these who seemed to be somewhat, Go ahead. whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person, for they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. Because now it goes, it goes back into, this is making reference to those Israelites who thought there was something in the world when they come into the truth, they had some status in the world. They think when they come into the truth, they will continue the same way. They want men to give them respect when they have not earned the respect in the truth, keeping God's commandments. So the Apostle Paul was addressing those type of men. Okay, go ahead. Verse 7, read. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, mm -hmm. as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, so the, the, the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to the Apostle Paul. The uncircumcision is the scattered Israelites, okay? Northern kingdom, which are called Gentile. He's going to tell you in the next verse. Go ahead. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. So the, the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to the Apostle Paul, just like the gospel of the circumcision was committed to the Apostle Peter. Because the circumcision goes into Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, which is Southern Kingdom. The uncircumcision goes into Ephraim, Manasseh, and the rest of the tribes. Okay? So let's go back. Gale, give me Go back to Romans now. Chapter 1, verse 2 again. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 2. Mm-hmm which he had promised a fall by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. In the Holy Scriptures, because this gospel was promised a four time by his holy, by the prophets in the Holy Scriptures, meaning it's written, it is prophesied by the prophets, you understand, that this gospel is going to be taught to the uncircumcision. Jump down now, okay? Jump down to verse 5. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 5. Mm -hmm. by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Among all nations for his name. He's going to tell you who those nations are. Read on, verse 6. Among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. So among these nations, he says, you are what? These na the all nations in verse 5, he says they are called of Jesus Christ, meaning what? They are called by the sacrifice that Christ made. They are brought back into the fold. That's what he's making reference. That's what he's alluding to. Go ahead. To all that be in Rome. To beloved all that of God. be in Rome. Hold on. 
is as all nations for his name to all nations that be in Rome. He's going to get specific on who he's talking about. Read. Beloved of God. Mm -hmm. Called to be saints. Stop right there. It says to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Because when we are in the streets, when we bring in this out, English was the problem. Because the sister and the brothers that were backed out of Christianity, they said, no, you see, it says beloved of God called to be saints, meaning they are called to be saints. Hold on. They are letting, the apostle Paul is letting you know that the people that he's writing to, they are, called, they are beloved of God and they are called the saints of God. That's what he's telling you right there. You understand? Because remember, the apostle Paul was writing to the children of Israel scattered in Rome that were living, they were living like what? They were living according to Gentiles. They, were, they had adopted Gentile customs and they were following the Gentile ways, you understand, and traditions. They were no longer keeping God's commandments. That's why it says, beloved of God, called to be saints. So they are called the saints. But the way that they were living, they were not living according to their true nationality. They were not living according to the saints of the Most High. Now they are called into this truth. You understand? They are brought back into this truth. That's what the Apostle Paul is explaining here. Watch this. Hold that. Give me the book of Psalms. Okay, 148 verse 14. Let's, you know what? Before we get there, give me Baruch 336. Let's see who is beloved of God according to the scripts. Okay. We need to understand it. You brothers that are teaching on the streets as well, you need to understand this stuff. Okay, Baruch 336. We watch God. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 36. Mm -hmm. He has found out all the way of knowledge and has given it unto Jacob, his servant, and to Israel, his beloved. And to Israel, his what? And to Israel, his beloved. And to Israel, his beloved. So these people, these, these nations that are scattered in Rome, beloved of God, these are Israelites. These are Jews. Because remember what we read in Galatians chapter uh, seven, verse, uh, chapter two, verse seven and eight. It says the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to the apostle Paul. That's who he's writing to here. He is writing to the uncircumcision of Israel, those that were cast off. Okay, so let's go back. Romans chapter 1, verse 7 again. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 7. Go ahead. To all that be in Rome, beloved mm -hmm. of God. Stop right there. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God. Now he's narrowing it down. He's letting you know those people that he's writing to that are in Rome. They are dwelling in Rome. They are beloved of God. We know that's Israel. This is the uncircumcision of Israel. The scattered Israelites. Read on. Called to be saints. They are called to be saints. Because the way they were living, they were living according to what? The actual Romans, meaning white people, Edomites. But these were Israelites scattered in Rome. So it says they are called to be saints. Now watch this. Get Psalms 148 verse 14. Let's see who the saints are according to the scriptures. Okay. Psalms 148 verse 14. Let's read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 148, verse 14. Read. He also exalted the horn of his people, mm -hmm. the praise of all his saints, Read. even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. You see that thing? He says, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. So what the Apostle Paul is writing to here, he's giving us clues who he's talking about. You understand? He says, they are beloved of God, called to be saints. Who are the saints? The children of Israel. Get Psalms 50 verse 5. Psalms 50 verse 5. Okay. The book of Psalms, chapter 50 verse 5. Go ahead. Gather my saints together unto me. Mm -hmm. those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. You see that thing? Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So the, only, the saints in the Bible is those that made a covenant with the Most High God by sacrifice. That's the 12 tribes of Israel. So let's go back. Romans 1 verse 7 now. Again. 
the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved mm-hmm. of God, Rape. call to be saints. Call to be saints. Call to be saints. Because our brothers and sisters in the world that are going to the Christian church, you understand? They don't understand simple English. Call to be saints. Who are the saints in the Bible? The 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So now we have established who the saints are, who the Romans are. You understand? These are the children of Israel scattered in Rome. Get Romans 2 verse 17 now. The book of Romans chapter 2 verse 17. Mm -hmm. Behold, thou art called a Jew. Remember the apostle Paul is writing to who? The children of Israel scattered in Rome. What is he calling them? Come on, read again. Behold, thou art called a Jew. Thou art called a what? Thou art called a Jew. Thou art called a Jew. He's writing to the children of Israel scattered in Rome. Go ahead. And rest is in the law. We rest in the law because the laws of God was given only to us. Read. And makest thy boast of God. We boast that the most high God is the God of Israel and none else. That's why we boast. You understand? Because by knowing that we're going to get the kingdom of heaven on earth. The children of Israel, we are the only nations on earth that are beloved of God. Understand that thing. So now, let's go back to Romans now. Romans chapter 3. You know what? Hold this. Give me Romans 10 verse 1. Okay. Romans chapter 10. Read verse 1 for me. Okay. Read that. The book of Romans chapter 10 verse 1. Mm-hmm. Brethren. Stop right there. Brethren. 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 Who is Paul's brethren? Because remember, he's writing to Romans. The children of Israel scattered in Rome. Who is Paul's brethren? Let's go to the chapter before that. Get Romans 9. Romans chapter 9, read verse 4. You know what? Start at verse 1. We're going to read down. Let's see who is Paul's brethren. Romans 9 verse 1. Come on. The book of Romans chapter 9 verse 1. Mm -hmm. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also beareth me, bearing me witness in the Holy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Amen. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren. For my what? For my brethren. So he says he wishes that he, he could have done what Christ did for the 12 tribes of Israel, for his brethren. Just like Christ did for his brethren. What is he saying? Hold this. Give me John 15 real quick. This is what the apostle Paul is saying. Okay. John 15 verse 13. Come on. The book of John chapter 15 verse 13. Mm -hmm. Greater love hath no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. You see that thing? That a man laid down his life for his friends. The apostle Paul said, listen, I wish I could have done that for my own nation as well. That's what he's saying right there. That's what it means to love your nation. You put your life on the line for the sake of your people. So let's go back. Romans 9. Read verse 2 again. Read verse 3 again. The book of Romans chapter 9 verse 3. Mm-hmm. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ. For my brethren. For my what? For my brethren. For my brethren. For my brethren. The same brethren that is writing to in Romans 10. Go ahead. My kinsmen, according to Mm -hmm. the flesh. My kinsmen, my family members, my kinfolk, according to the flesh, according to bloodline. Not according to how you feel in your heart, but according to bloodline, according to the flesh. We don't. He's going to tell you who his brethren are. Come on. Who are Israelites? Who are who? Who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? So Paul's brethren, according to the flesh, is the children of Israel. Go ahead. To whom pertaineth the adoption the and adoption, the glory? That, hold on. The adoption, that's Christ dying on the cross for the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the adoption. Read. And the glory. 
The glory of the kingdom pertaineth to Paul's brethren who are the Israelites according to the flesh. Read. And the covenant. The only new covenant pertain to the Israelites. Read. And the giving of the law. Because the laws was given to the 12 tribes of Israel, who is Paul's brethren according to the flesh. The reason why I keep emphasizing verse 3, according to the flesh, is because in the Christian church, they are pushing spiritual Israel. There is no such thing in the Bible. Read. And the service of God and the promises. And the service of God. Who do God's service is the children of Israel because we are the servants of God who do God's service and the promises. All the promises that are written in this book pertain to the Israelites. Okay, go ahead. Whose are the fathers? Whose are the fathers? Read on. And of whom as concerning the flesh Christ as concerning came. The what? As concerning the what? As concerning the flesh as concerning the bloodline, concerning the bloodline, read. Christ came. Christ what? Christ came. Christ came. Right there is letting you, this, this right here, this is the atomic bomb of Christianity. This verse right here will launch a nuclear bomb in the doctrine of Christianity and collapse the whole thing. This verse right here, Romans 9 is an atomic bomb because it's letting you right there, it says, Whose are the fathers? Which fathers? The Israelites, you understand? And of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. He's letting you know right there, Christ only came for the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. Who is over all? God blessed forever. Amen. Amen to that. Amen to that thing. Now go back to Romans 10 verse 1. Okay, we understand who Paul's brethren are now. Okay, read, the, read chapter 10, verse 1. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is oh. for Israel. For Israel, it says his heart and desire and prayer is to God is for Israel. Go ahead. That they might be saved. Is that they might be saved. So salvation is only open to the Israelites. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying right there. You understand? Okay, let's go back. Let's go back to Romans 3 now. Romans chapter 3, read verse 23 once again. The book of Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Mm -hmm. For all have sinned and came short of the glory of God. And come short of the glory of God. So who is the all? that have sinned and come short of the glory of God because they make it seem like it's talking about everybody. We've already proved that the book of Romans is not written for everybody. It's written to the children of Israel that were scattered in Rome. So now it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Who's that? Jump up to verse 19. Watch this. Read verse 19, Romans 3 verse 20. Read Romans 3 verse 19. Let's read that. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 19. Mm -hmm. For we know that what things soever the law said, it said to them who are under the law. You see what he's saying? It says, now we know, meaning this was known in Israel, that what things soever the law say, whatever the law says, it says to them that are under the law. Meaning whatever the law says, it says to them who are under it. Meaning those who the laws was given to, whatever the law says pertains to them. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying. Read. That every mouth may be stopped. Mm -hmm. And all the world may become guilty before God. So the world that we're reading about here is what? Is those that the law it was given to who are under it. Whatever it says, it pertains to them. That's the world is making reference to. You understand? The world here is not talking about everybody on earth. It's talking about those individuals who the law pertains to. Everybody understand that so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Read the verse again. Verse 19. The book of Romans chapter 3, verse 19. Now we know that what things soever the law said, 
it said to them who are under the law Great. that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. You see that thing? And all the world may become guilty before God. The world is talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. Hold this, give me Isaiah, okay? Isaiah chapter 45, verse 17. Watch this. Isaiah 45, verse 17. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. Mm -hmm. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. He shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. So now what we're reading here is this, but Israel shall be saved. This is a future prophecy. So this has not happened yet. It says Israel shall be saved in the future with an everlasting salvation, meaning they will rule forever once they get delivered. He says he shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So watch this, hold this, get John 3.16. I'm going to show you something. Pay close attention. John 3.16. Okay, let's read that. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So what we're reading here says, for God so loved the world. That part right there. For God so loved the world. That loved there is talking about in the past. So it says, God so loved the world loved, L-O-V-E-D, loved in the past. Who did God love in the past? That he will give his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Where is, the, where, 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 where is, is, is Christ getting this from? Where is he quoting from? He's quoting from Isaiah. You understand? Because he's talking to Nicodemus, because Nicodemus would have knowledge of the world that God loved in the past that he will give everlasting salvation to. That's why they're having this discussion. He's not speaking out of the blue. No, no. Go back to Isaiah 45, 17. I need you men to pay attention. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, 17. Come on. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Mm -hmm. Shall not be ashamed, nor confirmed found world without end. So the world that Isaiah is talking about is the same world that Christ is talking about that they knew or they knew of, meaning in the prophets they knew that there's a world of Israel that is going to be saved in the future with an everlasting salvation. That's why here John 3 16 says, for God so loved the world. So you would have to know the prophecy that tells you the world that God is going to, that the world, the world that God loved in the past, that is going to give everlasting salvation to. Which world is that? The world of Israel. You brothers understand that? Because I know you've been reading this all the time. So now I'm, I'm showing you what the scripture is really saying here. Pay close attention. Okay. So now, watch this. Give me the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 1. Because the world that is being spoken of here is talking about Israel, who God loved in the past. The Isaiah is prophesying about it. Give me Amos 3 verse 1. Okay? Amos chapter 3 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Amos chapter 3 verse 1. Come on. Hear this word that the Lord had spoken against you, O children of Israel, mm -hmm. against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, say. Stop right there. So he says, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O house of, O children of Israel. The children of Israel is the house of Israel, which is all 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? He says, against the whole family, that's the 12 tribes, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, say. What did he say about them? Go ahead. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Stop right there. You only, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. So the most said God only knows us. 
The world in John 3, 16 is the world that God is speaking about here in Amos 3, verse 2, that God only knows. God only knows one world, which is the world of Israel. That's it. That's why it says, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. You understand? Go ahead. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. He says, therefore, I'm going to punish you for all your iniquities. I'm going to judge you for all your sins. You understand? So the most High God only knows Israel. So much so that he prophesied by the mouth of the holy prophets that, listen, Israel is a world that I love. So much so that in the future, I'm going to what? I'm going to give them everlasting salvation because of the covenant that was made with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to perform that message that was promised unto him for his seed after him. You understand? Which is us today. I need you men to understand this thing. Okay? So he only knows us. So the promise of salvation is only given to who? The children of Israel. That the mouth, the prophets have spoken about it already. So Christ is only quoting who? He's quoting the prophets. Give me Mark 1 and 2. Mark chapter 1 verse 2. Watch this. Book of Mark chapter 1 verse 2. As it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. That goes into, that's uh, John the Baptist, which is Malachi. Okay, Elijah. That's written in Malachi. This is Elijah. But he says, as it is written in the prophets. So what Christ was speaking about in John 3 is written where? In the prophets. Where did we read about that? In Isaiah 45, verse 17. When he says, God loved. So we had to reference the, 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 the people that God loved in the past, which is called a world without end, whose promise of salvation, everlasting salvation, is only, only pertains to them. You brothers and sisters understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, all places. Yeah. Now, now watch this. Now go back to where we was at now. Go back to where we was at. Um... Go back to um, Romans 3 now. Romans chapter 3, we read verse 19 once again. The book of Romans chapter 3, verse 19. Come on. Now we know that what things soever the Lord saith, it's saith to them who are under the law, mm -hmm. that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Every mouth may be stopped who do not what? Who do not agree with what the Bible is saying of the people of Israel that are under the law, who the laws pertains to. You see that part right there? It says, Now we know that what things soever the law saith is said to them that are under the law. Hold this. Give me Galatians 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 21. Watch this. I'm putting the pieces of the puzzle together. Pay close attention. Take notes. Galatians 3, read verse 21. Watch this. The book of Galatians. Chapter 3, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Is the law then against the promises of God? That the law here is making reference to the law of animal sacrifice. Wait. God forbid. Meaning no, wait. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Then righteousness should have been by the law of animal sacrifice. The law that is being referenced here is the law of animal sacrifice. Read. But the scripture has concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Keep reading. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. You see that part right there? But before faith came, be, be, the faith is talking about who? Christ in verse 22. But before Christ came, we were kept under the law. We were kept under the law. You must make in reference to, make a point to emphasize the we there. The we says, we were kept under the law. The we that was kept under the law is who? The 12 tribes of Israel. That would be read in Romans 3, verse 19. Read again, verse 23. Come on. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 23. Mm -hmm. But before faith came, 
We were kept under the law. Great. Start up unto the faith with, which should afterwards be revealed. You see that thing? We should afterwards, meaning after the old covenant, should be revealed. Who was revealed after the old covenant? Jesus the Christ. He was the one that should afterwards be revealed unto us because we, the Israelites, before Christ came, we were kept under the law. Read. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. So the law of animal sacrifice was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Read. The book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. That we might be justified by faith. That we might get forgiveness through the blood that Christ would spill for the 12 tribes of Israel. That we might be justified by our faith in Christ's sacrifice. Read. But after that, faith is come. After that, Christ is come. Read. We are no longer under a schoolmaster. We are no longer under the law of animal sacrifice because it was a shadow of things to come. If you read Hebrews 10, we're going to read that, not now. Okay, let's go back. Romans, go back to Romans now, chapter 3. Okay, read verse 19 once again. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 19. Come on. Now we know that, that what things soever the law said, it said to them who are under the law. Right? That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. The all, the all the world that may become guilty before God is talking about those that were under the law who the law pertains to. That all the world may be guilt, become guilty before God. Now watch this. Remember what we read when it says, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. He's still making reference to the same people in verse 19. Now jump up to verse 9. Watch this. Read verse 9. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 9. Mm -hmm. What then? Are we better? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Read again verse 9. Watch, he's saying the same thing. He's clarifying it as he goes down. Read. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 9. Mm -hmm. But then, are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. Now stop right there. You see that part right there? It says, um, it says, no, in no wise. For we have before proved, be both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. Keep reading. Watch this. Verse 10. As it is written. There is none righteous. No, not one. Come on. There is none that understandeth. Mm -hmm. There is none that seeketh after God. You talk about the all, the Jews and Gentiles. Go ahead. They are all gone out of the way. Come on. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. So now, what, the, what is the Apostle Paul talking about here? All this. Get, get Galatians 3 now. Okay, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians 3. Read, read Galatians chapter 3. Read verse 22. The book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 22. But the scripture has concluded all under sin. You see that part right there? But the scripture has concluded all under sin. Remember, this is the book of Galatians. But the scripture has concluded all are all under sin. Read. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ, because before Christ came, we were under the schoolmaster. So the faith, the promise, but the promise by faith to receive salvation was through what? What was the faith? We put our faith in the bloodshed of bulls and of goats. That is the we put the faith in. Well, our faith was in there. The animal sacrifice. Now that Christ has now come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. Guess what? 
The promise is by faith of Jesus Christ instead of the animal that was slaughtered for us to receive atonement. It says, may be given to them that believe. Those of Israel that will keep God's commandments when the word comes out. That's what he's talking about right there. So go back to Romans 3. Romans chapter 3, read verse 9 again. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 9. Mm -hmm. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. So what is the apostle Paul talking about here? He says, what then? Are we better than they? Who is the we that the apostle Paul is making reference to? Give me Romans 11 verse 1. We're coming back here. Romans chapter 11 verse 1. It says, are we better than they? Who is the we that is better than they? Read what you got. Romans 11 verse 1. Come on. The book of Romans chapter 11 verse 1. Mm -hmm. I say then, has God cast away his people? God forbid. Wait. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. You see that thing? He's letting you know his tribe is from the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin was part of the southern kingdom, the, south, the part of the southern kingdom. So, then, so when he says, are we, he's making reference to himself, his tribe that he comes from, and the kingdom he belongs to, which is southern kingdom. So he says, are we of the southern kingdom better than they? Go back to Romans 3, verse 9 again. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 9. Mm -hmm. What then? Are we better than they? No. Stop right there. In no Hold on. He says, what then? Are we better than they? The we is southern kingdom. The they is going to tell you what they are. Keep reading. No. In no wise. Uh -huh. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles. Stop right there. It says, what? It says, for we have before proved both Jews, which is the we in the beginning of the verse, the Jews, which is the we, which is part of Southern Kingdom, and Gentiles is the they in the beginning of the verse. Who are those Gentiles? This is going into Northern Kingdom tribes. You understand? He's talking about Northern Kingdom. Get Romans 11 verse 13 real quick. Watch this. The book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 13. Mm -hmm. For I speak to you, Gentiles, mm -hmm. inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify, my, I magnify my office. Because the apostle Paul was given the gospel of the uncircumcision who are the Gentiles. The question is asking Romans 3, verse 9, he's talking about what? He's talking about Northern Kingdom because Southern Kingdom they thought they were better than Northern Kingdom, you understand, because they were keeping the laws and Northern Kingdom was not. And they were called the uncircumcision by the circumcision, which is not Southern Kingdom, which is the kingdom that the Apostle Paul stems from. You understand? So what we're reading here is what? He's letting them know, listen, I'm the Apostle of the Gentiles and I magnify my office. That's what he's saying right there. Now watch this. Hmm. Give me... Give me the book of John 4. I'm going to show you something this day. Okay. Give me John chapter 4. Read verse. Hmm. I don't think. Okay. Let me not complicate it. Let me just calm down. Okay. Hold on a second. Um, let's keep it simple. Give me John 7 35. I'll keep it simple like this. John 7 verse 35. These Gentiles that the apostle Paul is speaking of. Okay. The book of John chapter 7 verse 35. Mm -hmm. You know what? You know what? Wait, wait, wait. You know what? Let's not use that. Give me Romans 15. Romans 15 verse 11. We're going to read down. I'm going to show you something. We're going to explain the Gentile in Romans 3 verse 9 with this. Romans 15 verse 11. Let's start there. Okay, come on. The book of Romans chapter 15 verse 11. Mm -hmm. And again, praise the Lord. All ye Gentiles, and Lord him, all ye people. You see that thing? It says, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and loud him, all ye people. Go ahead. The book of Romans chapter 15, verse 12. And again, as science say, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. 
You see what he's saying? He's quoting Isaiah because what the Apostle Paul is talking about here, jump up to verse 4 so we understand why he's quoting Isaiah. There's a reason why he's quoting Isaiah. We read this verse in verse 4 all the time, but now you're going to get some contextual understanding of why the Apostle Paul was saying what he was saying. Read verse 4. Watch this. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Come on. For whatsoever things were written for time, were mm. written for our learning. You see that thing? The things that were written for time were written for us to learn from. Read. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You see that thing? That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Jump down to verse 12 now. Come on. He's going to reference the things that were written for time, that we may have what? Patience and comfort. Read. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And again, as science said, there shall be a root of Jesse. Come and on. he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. So now he's quoting Isaiah. He says, the root of Jesse, which is Jesus the Christ, he shall what? The root of Jesse, that's Christ, he says, he shall rise and reign over the Gentiles. In him, the root of Jesse, shall the Gentiles trust. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10. Let's read that. We're, we're still dealing with Romans 3, verse 9, so pay close attention. Okay? Isaiah 11, verse 10. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse. Come on. Which shall stand for an ensign of the people. Read. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. Because his kingdom will be everlasting, the root of Jesse, when he returns. It says, we shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek. So these people is talk about the Gentiles, right? Keep going. Verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that mm. the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to so what recover time? the remnant. That the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. The Lord shall send, he says, shall send his hand again the second time. Because what? For the preparation of the second coming of the Lord. You understand? The preparation for the second coming of the Lord. It says the Lord shall send his shall send his hand again the second time to do what now? To recover the remnant of his people. To do what? To recover the remnant of his people. To recover the remnant of his people. You understand? To recover the remnant of his people. Where are they scattered? Go ahead. Which shall be left from Assyria and from mm -hmm. Egypt. Read. And from Pathros, come on, and from Cush, and read. from Elam. Elam, that's that talk about the Medes, that's the Persians, read. And from Sinai, that's Iraq, and from Hamath, that's Syria, Arabia, read. And from the islands of the sea, that's the islands now, Cape Verde, and all of that, the Jamaica, and so forth, read. Come on, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations. You see that thing? The same ensign that we read in verse 10. It says what? And stand for an ensign of the people. And it shall be what? And to it shall the Gentiles seek. Here in verse 12 it says an ensign for the nations. It's going to tell you who those nations are, which are called Gentiles in verse 10. Read. And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. You see that thing? The scattered Israelites. The gospel too of the uncircumcision, Gentiles, scattered Israel, northern kingdom that was what? That was cast out of the 12 tribes of Israel because of idolatry and sin. Ray, come on. And gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four Ray. corners of the earth. You see that thing? So the outcast of Israel is talking about who? Give me that in Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4 verse 17. Watch this. The outcast of Israel. That's the subject. Okay, come on. Hosea 4, verse 17. The Let's of, read that. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. You see that thing? Ephraim is joined to idols. 
let him alone, meaning leave him alone. Okay, give me Hosea 9, verse 17 now. Watch this. The book of Hosea, chapter 9, verse 17. Mm -hmm. My God will cast them away. You will do what? My God will cast them away. My God will cast them away. Remember it says, to what? It says, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Read again, verse 17. Come on. The book of Hosea, chapter 9, verse 17. Mm -hmm. My God will cast them away. Read. Because they did not hearken unto him, mm -hmm. and they shall be wanderers among the nations. They shall be wanderers among the nations. Wanderers among the nations. That's why it says they're to recover the remnant of his people because they would be wanderers among these nations that they would be scattered from. You see that thing? That's what the Lord is saying right there. Now let's go back. Go back to Romans 3 verse 9. Now we understand who these Gentiles are. Okay, Romans 3, verse 9. Read that again. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 9. Mm -hmm. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. You see that thing? We have proved both Jews and Gentiles, meaning Judah and Israel, not Southern Kingdom and Northern Kingdom, that they are all under sin. Give me Daniel 9, verse 11. Daniel chapter 9, verse 11. He's saying the same thing. Watch this. Daniel 9, verse 11. Read what you got. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. Come on. Even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. Mm. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. You see what he's saying? He says, yeah, all Israel have transgressed thy law. That's the same thing that we read in Romans 9. Romans 3 verse 9 when it says that they are all under sin. Who's the day? Jews and Gentiles. Who's the Jews and Gentiles? Judah and Israel that they are all under sin. Daniel is saying the same thing that we're reading here. Read again, verse 11. Okay, come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Mm -hmm. Read. And he had confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us. Read. By bringing upon us a great evil. A great evil. That's Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68. Go ahead. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath, done, as, as hath been done upon Jerusalem. You see that that's the judgment. That's why it says they are all under sin. Go back to Romans now. Read verse 19 again. Read verse 19 now. We're jumping down to verse 19. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 19. Come on. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it said to them who are under the law. Come on. That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Meaning all 12 tribes in verse 9, when it says that they all are, it says that they are all under sin. That's the world that may be guilty before God. Because the laws was only given to the world of Israel that is without end. Go ahead. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Mm -hmm. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Now read verse 20 again, because this verse right here, Christian, the Christian church, they use this verse to say, you see, we are not under the law, but they have no idea what, they are, what this is talking, what the apostle Paul is talking about. Read which law is making reference to. Read that again, verse 20. 
the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his, in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Now stop right there. Now we're gonna, we need to understand what is the deeds of the law that no flesh will be justified. All this, give me Hebrews 10 now. Hebrews 10, read verse 1. By the deeds of the law, they shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Hebrews 10, verse 1. Let's read that. Let's see what is the deeds of the law that no flesh shall be justified in his sight. We what you got? The book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. Come on. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, mm -hmm. and not the very image of the things, right. can never with those sacrifices with those which what? they offered, can never with those sacrifices, with those sacrifices, with those sacrifices, with those sacrifices, those sacrifices is the law that was a shadow of good things to come. So the sacrifices are the deeds of the law. How were the deeds of the law done pertaining to sacrifices? All that. Hebrews 9 and 9. We're coming back here. Hebrews 9, verse 9. Come on. Read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 9. Come on. Which was a figure for the time then present. So the law of animal sacrifice was the figure of the time then in the old covenant of animal sacrifice that was pertaining to that present time. Read. In which were offered both gifts and sacrifices. You see that thing? Where we were offering both gifts to the, to the Levites to give to the altar, which were the kamas that attended to the altar, and sacrifices of blood, of the blood of bulls and of goats. Read. That could not make him that did the service perfect. So him that did the service didn't make him perfect because the law of animal sacrifice was not perfect as pertaining to the what? As pertaining to the conscience. As pertaining to your mind, your conscience. You understand? Keep reading. Come on. Verse 10. Which stood only in meats and drinks. You see that thing? And I, we stood, hold on. We stood only in meat offerings and drink offerings. That's what he's talking about when he says we stood only in meats that's the meat offerings and drinks, which is the drink offerings. Come on. And diverse washings. And diverse washings that needed to be done regarding what, what the priest told Israel to do in order for them to be washed of their sins. Read. And carnal ordinances uh -huh. imposed on them until the time of reformation. Until the time that Christ should be introduced to usher in the new covenant. Okay, go back to Hebrews 10, verse 1 again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 1. Mm -hmm. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, Great. and not the very image of the things, come on. can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers they unto perfect. You see that thing? It could not make those that did the sacrifices perfect as pertaining to the conscience. That's why every year on the Day of Atonement, Israel, we had to do what? We all had to what? We all had to go to Jerusalem to observe the Day of Atonement so that there were priests, you understand, Aaron and his sons, you understand, whoever was the high priest at that time, which is Aaron's seed line, will go into the holies of all wearing the ephah, representing the 12 tribes of Israel, to offer sacrifices for himself and for the people. Okay, go ahead. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Because if it was perfect, they would have ceased to be, or they, would, they were going to stop. They were going to only do it once, and that would be it, which was not the case, right? Because that the worshippers, once purged, should have had no more conscience of sins. If they were purged once, they should have had no more conscience of sin because if it was perfect, they shouldn't have had no more, more conscience of sin. But that wasn't the case. That's why every year we have to sacrifice for the same sins over and over. You understand? Read. But in those sacrifices, there uh -huh. is a remembrance. There is a what? There is a remembrance. Uh -huh. Again, made of sins every year. You see that thing? It says, in, but in those sacrifices that we did, 
again, it says there was a remembrance again made of sins every year. So the sacrifices, you understand, it what? It proved that we are under sin. That's why we had to do these sacrifices because we're in the midst of sin. It confirmed that we're in the midst of sin, hence the sacrifices. That's why it brought to our remembrance that we're in the midst of sin because we would premeditate sin, hoping that we'll offer the best sheep or the best goat, the best oxen, so on and so forth. You understand? That's why it says there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. What the Apostle Paul is saying here, he said the same thing in Romans 3 verse 20. Let's go back. Romans 3 verse 20. You will see he's saying the same thing. Watch this. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 3 verse 20. Mm -hmm. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Come on. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. You see that thing? It says, by the deeds of the law. The deeds of the law is what stood only in what? Meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances that we read about in Hebrews 9, verse 10. He says, what? By the law is the knowledge of sin. Where did we just, where did, where did we just read that? Go back to Hebrews 10, verse 3 again. So we see. It says, by the law is the knowledge of sin. By the law is the knowledge of sin. We read it earlier. Go back to Hebrews 10, verse 3 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. By the law is the knowledge of sin. By the law is the knowledge of sin. Because the law of animal sacrifices on the day of atonement and every time when we had to perform, even when it wasn't on the day of atonement, guess what we did? It was a reminder that we were in the midst of sin. That's why yearly we had to go to Jerusalem for our sins to be purged on the day of atonement so we can start over. You understand? That's why it says there is a remembrance again made of sins every year, once a year on the day of atonement. By the law is the knowledge, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Go back to Romans 3, now read verse 21. The book of Romans chapter 3, verse 21. Come on. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest. Uh -huh. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. You see what he's saying? He says, but now, now that we are no longer under the law of animal sacrifice, which is what? The deeds of the law, which is animal sacrifice, we stood in meat offerings and drink offerings and so forth. He says, but now, it's the same thing we read in Galatians 3. He says, but now we are no longer under the schoolmaster. He's saying the same thing here. But now the righteousness of God without the law of animal sacrifice is manifested. What does that mean? What does that mean? Give me John 1 verse 29. I'm going to show you what it means when it says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. John 1 verse 29. Watch this. Come on. John chapter 1 verse 29. Wait. The next day, John see Jesus coming unto him and say, mm -hmm. Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. You see that thing? That's the, that's the Lamb of God is the righteousness of God without the law. That's when he was manifested. You understand? To come and take away the what? Away the sins of the world, the world of Israel. The same world that we read about in, in Romans 3 verse 19 is the same world here that we read about in Isaiah also, 45 verse 17. Read it again, read it again. Verse 29, come on. The book of Romans chapter, chapter 1 verse 29. Mm -hmm. The next day John sees Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Which taketh away the sin of the world. The righteousness of God Without the law is manifested. Jump down to verse 31 now. Come on. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 31. Wait. Right. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. You see that thing? But that he should be made manifest to Israel to take away what? The law of animal sacrifice. So he can be the ultimate sacrifice. So we don't have to watch slaughter animals anymore. He will be that ultimate sacrifice that will bring us closer unto the Lord. 
Ray. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. Okay, now let's go back. Go back to where was that now? Romans chapter 3. Read verse 21 again. The book of Romans chapter 3, verse 21. Mm -hmm. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Because in the law is written that Christ will be sent. In the prophets is written that Christ will be sent to usher in the new covenant. You understand? So that's what we read in here. It says that now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. How? Because Christ died for the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why it says, behold, the Lamb of God which come in and taketh away the sins of the world, that he should be made manifest to Israel. And his witness by the law was written in the law and by the prophets. Okay, watch this. Give me Romans 8 verse 4. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 4. Mm -hmm. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Come on. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You see that thing? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Now we are the living sacrifice now. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. You understand? Who walk not after the flesh, who walk not after the law of animal sacrifice, but after the spirit as pertaining to the conscience. That's what he's saying right there. Okay, go back. Romans chapter 3 now. Um, read verse 22. The book of Romans chapter 3, verse 22. Ray. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto mm -hmm. all and upon all them that believe, there is no difference. But there is no difference. So you see what he's saying right there? Here there's a, there's a change in covenants are being changed here. We're moving from the old covenant of animal sacrifice where the blood of bulls and goats had to be what, what we put our faith in plus keeping of the commandments. The blood of animals had to be shed. Now the blood of Christ is the one that is shed and now we must put our faith in him plus keeping of the commandments. That's why it says, it's, verse 22 is clarifying verse 21. It says, even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ instead of the faith that we put in animals unto all upon all them that believe, meaning the 12 tribes of Israel that believe on the sacrifice that Christ made. That's what he's talking about right there. You understand? Read verse 23. Come on. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now we understand what he's talking about. He says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Who's the all that have sinned? All 12 tribes of Israel. All 12 tribes of Israel had sinned and come short of the glory of God. You understand? So now we needed Christ's sacrifice to do what? To bring us unto the Most High. Watch this. Give me the book of Jeremiah 31. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 31. Um, let's read verse 31. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Great. Right. Behold, the day is come, said the Lord that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel mm -hmm. and with the house of Judah. You see, it says, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So the new covenant is with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Hmm. You know what? Read verse 27. Let's read down. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 27. Go ahead. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man mm -hmm. and with the seed of beast. The Lord says he's going to judge Israel, house of Judah and Israel. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that like as I have watched over them to pluck them and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict so will I watch over them to build and to plant, said the Lord. So the Lord says he's going to restore us. He says, as, as, just as he was, we were destroyed, you understand? He says, plug up, break. we were broken, we are plucked up, meaning we're taken out of our land, we're broken down, we're thrown down, and we were destroyed and we're afflicted. And so will I watch over them to build, to plant, said the Lord. The Lord says what? 
we were meaning what is alluding to the new covenant the new covenant under christ read in those days they shall say no more the fathers have eaten a sour grape and meaning the children's teeth are set on edge meaning what judgment there's there is says the fathers have eaten if eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge meaning judgment okay go ahead this is how the lord is going to what he's going to build us up and plant us go ahead but everyone shall die for his own iniquity mm -hmm. every man that eateth the sour grape his teeth shall be set on edge meaning everybody is going to be judged for what they've done you understand but watch this watch this the most said god says now i'm going to give you a chance to get your mind right. This is how the Lord says, I'm going to do it. Read. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Uh -huh. Although I was an husband unto them, said the Lord. So now the Lord is saying, listen, the new covenant that I'm going to make with the house of Israel and the house of Judah is not, the, is not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Because what covenant was there? Was the covenant of animal sacrifice. That's the covenant he's making reference to which my covenant they break, because we broke all the laws that was given unto us under that covenant. So now it says, I'm going to create a new covenant now. You understand? Which is going to be perfect. Now watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews 8 now. Hebrews 8. Hebrews 8, verse 7. The book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 7. Go ahead. For if that first covenant had been faultless, Ray? then should no place have been sought for the second. You see what he's saying? If the first covenant, if that first covenant was, was faultless, there wouldn't be a need for a new covenant or a second covenant. Because the old covenant was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ because it was not perfect. You understand? It did not make the commas there unto perfect, like you read in Hebrews 10 verse 1. That's why the second covenant had to be established, which will be under Christ. You understand? So go back to Romans now. Romans chapter 3, read verse 20, read verse 20, uh, verse 20, verse 20, verse 22. Romans 3, verse 22. The book of Romans chapter 3, verse 22. Mm -hmm. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto mm -hmm. all and upon all them that believe, there Wait. is no difference. For there is no difference. Go ahead. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All 12 tribes will sin and come short of the glory of God. That's why it says, for if the old covenant had was faultless, there wouldn't be a need for the second covenant to be established. That's what we read in Romans 8, Hebrews 8 verse 7. Go ahead. Being justified freely by his grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Read the verse again, verse 24. Okay, pay attention here. Come on. The book of Romans chapter 3, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. He says, now we are going to be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Being justified free. Being justified free. This justification is free because under the old covenant of animal sacrifice, the justification wasn't free. What did we have to bring? The justification wasn't free under the old covenant of animal sacrifice. I'm just giving it away. Watch this. Let's go back now. Let's go back to Hebrews. Okay? Let's get Hebrews 9. The justification wasn't free under the, under the old covenant of animal sacrifice. Go back to Hebrews 9. Hebrews chapter 9, let's read verse 10. You know what? Read verse 9 and 10 together. 
Okay. Of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 9. Go ahead. Which was a figure for the time then present, mm -hmm. which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Right. Which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposing on them until the time of reformation. You see these two verses right here, when it says, which was the figure of the time then present, in which we of, were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service therefore perfect, as pertaining to the conscience. Because he says, we stood only in meats and drinks. So imagine, it wasn't free. You had to have these things. You had to have the sheep, you have to have livestock. You have to be wealthy in order for you to bring these things to the altar. So you can be what? So your sins may be forgiven. So now Christ, he ushered in the new covenant so that we can be what? So Christ can be that ultimate sacrifice for us. That's why it says justified freely. Meaning you don't have to bring nothing. The sacrifice that you bring now is yourself when you keep God's commandments. Imagine if we, we were under the old covenant and we were not now, it wasn't free. We don't have animals. We're poor. How are we going to be able to bring these animals? You understand? Negroes be making mistakes on a daily basis throughout the day. So imagine your whole flock is gone because you just be sinning the whole day. That's why it says justified freely by his grace. You see that thing right there? This is some heavy stuff right here. It's letting you know a switch in the scriptures. You understand? The spiritual understanding here is like it's different because the Levites were living large. They was rich through what? Through those what? Through those gifts and sacrifices that had to be brought. That's why the scribes and Pharisees, they were not, they were angry because of what Christ taught. Because why? That means if this, because of what this brother is teaching, that means that the people are not going to bring their animals no more. They are not going to bring their, their goats and the sacrifices and their gifts anymore. That's what it means. So he threatened the whole church system of the scribes and Pharisees because there was wicked as hell. I want you men and women to understand what's going on here. This is heavy stuff. Okay? Now, let's go back to Romans. Go back to that's why it says being justified freely. Okay? Watch this. Let me see if I can find another one. Just popped into my head. Bear with me. Give me the book of uh, mm, Galatians. Okay. Give me Galatians 2. Galatians chapter 2 and verse. Get Galatians 2 verse 16. Watch this. The book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 16. Go ahead. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. This justification, what is it talking about? What is it talking about? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Knowing that a man is not forgiven by the works of the law, the deeds of the law, meaning the works of animal sacrifice. He says, you're not going to be forgiven by the works of the law, the deeds of the law, which was not free. Go ahead. But by the faith of Jesus Christ, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, but by the sacrifice that Christ made, right? Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ uh -huh. and not by the works of the law, right? For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. You see that thing? But by, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. What is the works of the law? The deeds of the law of animal sacrifice. It says no flesh will be justified. Go ahead. Because it wasn't perfect. It's pertaining to the conscience. Read. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, right we here. ourselves also. Wait, wait, wait. This is now goes into those of our brothers and sisters in the Christian church who don't understand Christ. It says, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, meaning we seek to be forgiven by Christ. Go ahead. We ourselves also are found sinners. We found ourselves breaking God's commandments, right? 
is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Is therefore Christ, Christ is giving you license to break his laws? Go ahead. God forbid. Meaning, no, he does not give you license to break his laws. So what are you supposed to do under Christ? Keep reading. Read. For if I build again the things which I destroyed. It says, for if I build again the things which I have destroyed. You build again the things which you destroyed. What did you destroy? The old man. Because every day you're supposed to bury the old man. So Christ, the Lord is saying through the apostle Paul, he says, if I build again, meaning you go back into your sins, the, the ones that you've repented from, it says, if, or if I build again the things which I have destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Because now you're breaking the commandments again. But yet you seek to be justified by Christ as if Christ gave you license to break the laws, which is what God forbid, meaning no, he did not. That's what he's saying right there. That's what he's saying right there. So let's go back to Romans now. Okay. Now that we understand Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Um, read verse 24 once again. I want this verse to sink in. Okay. Come on. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 24. Read. Right. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now we are justified freely by the grace of Christ through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, meaning the sacrifice that he made, the ultimate sacrifice. Go ahead. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. You see that part right there? Whom God has sent forth to be a propitiation, to be what? To be, to be, to redeem us through faith in his blood. Now we are no longer going to be redeemed through the faith in the blood of the animals we are going to be what redeemed through the faith in the blood of Christ the sacrifice that he would make go ahead to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past stop right there to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past hmm. what is that talking about what is that talking about to re, or it says what to declare that his righteousness for the remission, for the forgiveness of sins that are past. All this, give me Hebrews, Hebrews 9. Let's go back there. Okay, Hebrews chapter 9, read verse 15 now. Watch this. For the remission of sins that are past, read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Come on. That by means of death. By means of the, what? That by the means of death. By, that by means of death. That by means of death, meaning Christ died. You understand? By means of Christ's death. Go ahead. For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. Stop right there. For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Who was under the first testament? Give me Psalms chapter 50 verse 5 again, because we read this earlier in the beginning of the class. Psalms 50 verse 5. Watch how this comes together, okay? This Bible is beautiful, man. Watch this. Psalms 50 verse 5. Come on. The book of Psalms chapter 50 verse 5. Go ahead. Gather my saints together unto me. Uh -huh. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. You see that thing? Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So when it says, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, it's talking about the saints that made a covenant with the Lord by sacrifice. They are the ones that are going to receive redemptions for the transgressions that were under the first testament. Because Christ only came for us, the 12 tribes of Israel, to redeem us for, from the transgressions that we committed under the first testament. Remember what we read in Hebrews 8. You understand? Hebrews 8, it says what? It says we, we, we Hebrews 8, verse 8 through 10, it goes into that. Jeremiah 31, verse 31 down, it goes into that as well. It says, which covenant we break. We broke the first covenant. The covenant that was given to us when we came out of Egypt, we broke all the laws that was given to us under the first testament. 
So Christ was to redeem us for the transgressions that we committed under the first testament because we broke all the commandments. That's why it says all under sin. You understand? And all fell short of the glory of God because we could no longer be, if the most I could no longer hear us. The only way that the Lord would hear us is through the blood of his son, Jesus the Christ. That's the only time when the Lord would hear us and forgive us of our sins. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, let's go back now. Go back to Romans 3. Okay, Romans chapter 3, verse 25. No, no, go back to Hebrews. Hebrews 9, verse 15, once again. Okay, wait. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Come on. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. You see that part right there? Where did we just read this? Isaiah 45 and 17. We read this earlier on. When it says, they which are called might receive their promise of eternal, in, eternal inheritance. You see that thing? it says, Israel shall be saved with an everlasting salvation. That's what we're reading here. They might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. When it says Israel shall be saved with an everlasting salvation, they shall get that real quick. Isaiah 45, 17. Read that. Isaiah 45, verse 17. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. Come on. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. So it says Israel shall be saved. They're going to receive what? The promise of eternal inheritance. That's what we read in Hebrews 9 verse 15. Now watch this. John 3 16 now. Watch this. John 3 16. This is the prophecy. Now in John 3 16 is the fulfillment of that prophecy. Watch this. John 3 16. Let's get there. The book of John chapter 3 verse 16. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Come on. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the fourth there. You see, when it says, For God so loved the world, they are quoting because this has not happened yet. It was yet to take place. But Christ is bringing this in so we understand what's about to happen. The fulfillment of this, guess what? Get that in. Go back to Hebrews 9, verse 15. I'm going to show you something. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 15. Uh -huh. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. That by means of death. Stop right there. The that by means of, hold on. That by means of what? That by means of death. That by means of death. Christ is the mediator of the New Testament by means of death. Hold this, jump down to verse 18. Watch this. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 18. Come on. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. You see that thing? The first testament was not, was was not dedicated without blood. That why it says, by means of death, he is the mediator of the New Testament, by, by means of death. So the same way, the Old Testament was not dedicated without blood. The New Testament also will not be dedicated without blood. It will not. It will not be dedicated without blood. Jump down to verse 22 so we can prove that. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. Come on. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And Come without on. shedding of blood is no remission. You see that thing? Without the shedding of blood, there is no repentance. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. That's why Christ said to die. That's why Christ said to die. That's why it says, by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. You see that part right there? It says, almost all things are by the law perished with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. There is no forgiveness of sins. That's why Christ said to die. Give me X5 stage. 
the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 30. Go ahead. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Come on. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. You see that thing? It says, he made God exalted with his right hand. Remember, it says, in verse 30, it says, raised up God, our fathers, raised up Jesus, whom he slew. He was crucified and was hanged on the tree, the cross. He made God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins, for the redemption of transgressions that were under the first testament. That's what he's saying right there. Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew 27, verse 24. Hmm. Matthew 27, verse 24. Watch this. Book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 24. Rain. When Pilate saw that he could prevail, that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made. Tumult by our water. forefathers. Our forefathers created a tumult. Okay? Because they wanted Barabbas to be received to be released from prison and Christ, you understand, to be destroyed. Go ahead. He took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. Meaning this just person, meaning what? He's innocent. Go ahead. See to it. See you to it. Meaning he's talking about our forefathers that were making a tumult. That was that great multitude. You understand? Watch this. Verse 25. Come on. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. You see that thing? The people answered and said, His blood be upon us and on our children. So the blood of Christ was going to be what was, was, was to for the washing, you understand, of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's how now we are sanctified by the blood of Christ. You understand? We will overcome by the blood of the lamb, like, it's, like we read about in, in Revelation 12, verse 7. It says what they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. That's the same thing. You understand? His blood is how we are going to work, how we are going to be redeemed from the transgressions that were committed under the first testament. You understand? Get John 9, verse 30. We are going over the fulfillment of what we read in Isaiah. We're going over the fulfillment of what we that the fulfillment that was mentioned, you understand, in John 3 16. The fulfillment that was mentioned in what in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. That's the same thing we're reading here. Get John 9, verse 30. When he when he done it, this is what he said. We what you got. John 9, verse 30. Come on. Oh, John chapter 9, verse 30. No, John 19. I'm sorry, John 19, verse 30. The book of John. Chapter 19, verse 30. Mm -hmm. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. It is what? And he bowed. It is finished. It is finished. Him dying on the cross for the 12 tribes of Israel, that was finished, okay? To redeem those that were under the, what? the old covenant for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Go ahead. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. That's when, that, that's when it was fulfilled. Go back to Hebrews now. Chapter 9. Read verse 15 once again. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15. Come on. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. That by means of death. You see that thing? That by means of death. We read that. Go ahead. For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, right? they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. You see that thing? With an everlasting salvation. That he that believeth on him may not perish but have everlasting life. Go back to Romans 3. Read verse 25 again. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 25. Come on whom God had set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood mm -hmm. to declare his righteousness 
for the remission of sins that are past. You see that thing? True. For the remission of sins, for the remission of sins that are past. Remission of sins that were committed under the First Testament. Read. Through the forbearance of God. Because the Mose God did not deal with us. The only time the Lord could deal with us is through his son dying on the cross for the 12 tribes. Because guess what? When we were performing these animal sacrifices, the Lord was like, I'm heartful with this. I don't want this no more. You understand? Because Israel is wicked as hell. I have to send my son down there to die for them. So now so that I can deal with Israel. Because as of now, I cannot deal with Israel. They are all evil. Okay, go ahead. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness. At this time, his righteousness, meaning Christ's righteousness. Okay, come on. That he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So Christ will justify those that believe in the sacrifice that he made. Christ is going to justify those that believe in the sacrifice that he made. That's why the book of Hebrews was written. That's why the apostle Paul wrote to the Hebrews first in Jerusalem, and then he started to write to who? To the children of Israel that were scattered abroad, that they may be brought back in. You understand? Hebrews, Romans chapter 11, verse 13. Let's go back there. I'm going to show you something with this. Watch this. Romans chapter 11, verse 13. Okay? You know what? Hmm. Romans chapter 11, verse 7. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 11, verse 7. Come on. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. Right. But the election hath obtained it, and the rest are, are, were blinded. He says, but the election hath obtained. He says, what then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. But the election hath obtained it, and the rest was blind. Who was blinded? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi was blinded. Who was the blind? The scribes and Pharisees, they were the blind. You understand? He says, but the rest were blinded, which is who? Southern kingdom, the chief priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees. You understand? They had to be blinded so that what? Watch this. Hmm. Give me the book of Matthew 23 real quick. I'm going to show you something here. Okay? He says, the rest was blinded. Remember who's, he says, the election had obtained. Who's the elect? Give me Isaiah 45, verse, verse 4 again. Isaiah 45, verse 4. We, did, we didn't read it today, right? Isaiah 45, verse 4. Read that first. Then we're going to go to, it says, the rest was blinded. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 4. Come on. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect. So Israel I, is the elect. The elect is Israel. The elect is Israel. So now it says, he says, but the election had obtained it, but and the rest was blind. Who was the rest that was blinded? Watch this. The elect here goes into who? Southern kingdom, because the apostle Paul was given the gospel of the uncircumcision. You understand? They needed to be brought back in. And the rest was blinded. Give me Matthew 23. Okay. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 15. Watch this. Book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Stop right hypocrites. there. Woe, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Jump down to verse 16. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Woe unto you, ye blind guides. Jump down to verse, verse 19. You know, verse 17. Read 17. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 17. Ye fools and blind. Ye fools and blind. Talk about the scribes and Pharisees, verse 19. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 19. Ye fools and blind. Verse 24. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 24. Ye blind guides. Come down to verse 26. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Thou blind Pharisee. Go back to where he was at now. Go back to Romans 11, verse 7 again. Now we know who is the blind. The blind was the scribes and Pharisees, the chief priests. They were blinded. Okay, go back to Romans 11, verse 7. The book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 7. 
Mm -hmm. What then? Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh for. Come on. But the election hath obtained it, and the mm -hmm. rest were blinded. The rest was blinded. It's talking about the scribes and Pharisees, the chief priests, because they were blind. You understand? Give me that in First Peter 2, real quick. Okay. First Peter. First Peter chapter 2, read verse 6. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 6. Read. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Mm -hmm. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. Mm -hmm. Let precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. And he that believeth on Christ will not be confused. I mean, you keep the commandments and you believe on the faith and, and, and have the faith in the sacrifice that Christ made. Okay, watch this. Keep reading. So this chief cornerstone is talking about the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Go ahead. And to you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. You see that thing? And to you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. Go ahead. But unto them which be disobedient, uh -huh. the stone which the builders disallowed. The builders the were disguised in faith. Hold on. The builders were disguised in Pharisees that was blind. You understand? It says, to them which be disobedient, it says, the stone which the builders disallowed, they rejected Christ, the scribes and Pharisees, not all Israel. Go ahead. The same is made the head of the corner. Meaning what? He's the head of the 12 tribes. He's the commander in chief. Read. And a stone of stumbling. So Christ was a stone of stumbling to the builders. Read. And a rock of offense. Because they were offended at his doctrine. Read. Even to them would stumble at the word. They are stumbling at the, 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 the word that Christ taught. They are stumbling. They didn't believe he was the Messiah. Read. Being disobedient. Uh-huh. Where unto also they were appointed. They were appointed, meaning what? They were ordained not to understand. That's why it says, um, where unto also they were appointed. A lot of the times when you see our people, some people, they come to camp when we teach on the deeds. And when we bring out the scriptures, Christ is a black man. We are the Israelites. We can prove Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68, the curses. You understand and all that. They still don't get it. Some of them, they are appointed not to get it. So don't take it personal. Some of them, they are appointed not to understand. And it's the Lord's will that they not understand because they are not going to repent anyway. That's why it says, and where unto also they were appointed. They were appointed to be blind. So they don't get it. Go back to Romans 11, verse 7 again. The book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 7. Mm -hmm. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeked for. Right. But the election hath obtained it, and the Come rest on. were blinded. The rest was blinded, which is the scribes and Pharisees, the chief priests. Read on. They were appointed. Go ahead. According as it is written, mm -hmm. God hath given them the spirit of slumber. Ray. Eyes that they should not see, uh -huh. and ears that they should not hear unto this day. You see that thing? So it says what? It is written that God has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this very day, 2022. Our people still, many of our people, they still don't get it because the Lord is the Lord's will that they shouldn't get this. But what I'm showing here is, is going into Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom. You understand? The, elect, the election had obtained it and the rest was blind. The rest that was blinded was Southern Kingdom, the scribes and Pharisees, the chief priests, the builders. You understand? It says the election of the obtained it. He's talking about the Northern Kingdom that needed to be brought back in. So here he's going into what? Judah and Israel that needs to be brought back in by the blood of Christ. You understand? Meaning Judah, meaning Northern Kingdom must be brought in and must be brought in and that all 12 tribes be as one. That's why the Apostle Paul had to go and deal with Northern Kingdom to bring them back into the fold. Watch this. Jump down to verse um, 
Read, read verse 15. Okay, Romans 11 verse 15. The book of Romans chapter 11 verse 15. Go ahead. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, mm -hmm. what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? So now it says, but if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, who was, who was, who was cast off in terms of what? They stumbled at the word. Let's talk about Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the chief priest. You understand? So that they can, the northern kingdom can be reconciled. So that they can be brought back into the fold. That was reconciling of the world in the world of Israel. The whole point of that was to bring northern kingdom back into the fold. That's what this is going into. You understand? It says what? What, should the, what shall be the receiving of, the, of them be? But the life from the dead? You understand? Watch this. The reconciling of Israel. You understand? Of the world. Give me Zechariah 12 verse 7. They needed to be brought back in. But what needed to happen was, what needed to happen is that, hmm, I'll do it like this, right? Hold on. Give me John 4. Let's use John. Watch this. John chapter 4. The reconciling. Get John chapter 4. You know what? No, no. Give me Matthew 10. Let's start there. Give me Matthew 10 verse 5. Okay. Matthew chapter 10. Let's read verse 5. Watch this. The book of Matthew, the 10 verse 5. Come on. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. So Christ is talking to the 12 disciples, saying, Listen, don't go into the way of the Gentiles. Why? Because go back to what we, what we, you know what? Get Zechariah 11 verse 14. Let's read that. Zechariah chapter 11 verse 14, it says, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any of the city of the Samaritans enter ye not. So the Gentiles are the Samaritans. You see that? Okay, I hope you can pick that up. The Gentiles are the Samaritans. Get Zechariah chapter 11 verse 14. Let's read that. The book of Zechariah. Chapter 11, verse 14. Read. Then I cut asunder my other stuff. Mm -hmm. Bands. That I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. You see what the Lord did? He broke the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. Because there was a split in the kingdom. The Lord is the one that did that thing. So that later on, he will send his son Christ to bring northern kingdom in that all 12 tribes can be together again as one. One fold, one shepherd. Okay? So go back to um, Matthew 10 verse 5 again. The book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 5. Mm -hmm. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. You see that thing? Because it says, don't enter into the city of the Samaritans because they are Gentiles. They are living like Gentiles. You understand? Because there was a split in the nation. Northern kingdom was cast off because they went into idolatry. We read it earlier in uh, Hosea 4 verse 17, Hosea 9 verse 17. It goes into the same thing. Okay? The reason why he said that is because there was a split and that split was because northern kingdom went into idolatry later on and they were cut off from the commonwealth of Israel. I'm putting the pieces together. If you read Ephesians 2 verse 11 down. Okay, go ahead. Verse 6. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This lost sheep of the house of Israel goes into southern kingdom. He says, but rather go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Because they also were lost. You understand? So now Christ was to bring all 12 tribes together as one. Go back to Romans. Okay, go back to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, verse 15 again. The book of Romans chapter 11, verse 15. Mm -hmm. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? So the apostle Paul is letting us know that all 12 tribes must come together. They must be reconciled. The reconciling of Israel must come together. Watch this. Give me John 10, 15. John 10, verse 15. Okay, come on. The book of John, chapter 10, 
verse 15. Right. As the Father knoweth me, mm -hmm. even so know I the Father. Right. And I lay down my life for the sheep. He says, I lay down my life for the sheep. Give me, George, give me Matthew 15, 24. I lay down my life for the sheep. Who's the sheep? Read that. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. Come on. But he answered and said, mm -hmm. I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, at this point, all Israel is lost. Not just Northern Kingdom, but Southern Kingdom as well. So what the Apostle Paul is teaching, he's teaching, he's fault also, he's teaching Northern Kingdom. But the rest of the apostles were dealing with the Apostle Peter and them, they were dealing with the gospel of the circumcision, while the Apostle Paul was dealing with the gospel of the uncircumcision, so that all 12 tribes can be brought together by the blood of Christ. You understand? The prodigal son. The prodigal son is talking about Northern Kingdom be brought back in, that all 12 can be together as one. Okay? Now, go back to John 10. Read verse 16 now. Come on. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 16. Read. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Which are not of this fold. Whose fold is he talking about? He's talking about his fold, which is Southern Kingdom which are not of this fall. Go ahead. Them also I must bring, uh -huh. and they shall hear my voice. They're going to hear the laws of God, come on. And they shall be one fall and one shepherd. They shall be one fall and one shepherd. Now watch this. Give me that in Ezekiel 37 verse 21. They shall be one fold and one shepherd. Okay. Ezekiel 37 verse 21. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 21. Come on. I say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen. Mm -hmm. Whither they be gone. Come on. And will gather them on every side and bring hey. them into their own land. You see that thing? It says, I will take the children of Israel, the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone. So the subject matters about the children of Israel, which is what we're reading about here. The Christ is quoting Ezekiel 37, right? Here, when it says, the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, the other sheep, the children of Israel, you understand? Them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice. They shall be one fold, one shepherd. You see that part right there? I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, because we would be scattered, whether and, and will gather them on every side. Now, what is that talking about? On every side of the earth where we are scattered and bring them into their land. That's Jerusalem, right? Verse 22, Ezekiel, come on. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 22. Mm -hmm. I will make them one nation in the I will land. Make them one them. nation. One nation does one fold in John 10, 16. Come on. In the land upon the mountains of Israel. Mm -hmm. And one king shall be king to them all. Now the one king is the one shepherd, which is Jesus the Christ. Read. And they shall be no more two nations. You see that thing? They shall be no more two nations. Meaning divided into Judah and Israel. They shall be no more two nations. Meaning they are going to be one fold. Go ahead. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. You see that thing? They are not going to be divided into southern kingdom and northern kingdom. We are going to be all 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? That's why it says, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that's why it says they shall be divided. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. So go back to Romans 11, verse 15. Now we understand the reconciling of the world is what we read in John 10, 16, which Christ is quoting Ezekiel 37, 21, and 22. Go back to Romans 11, verse 15. I'm almost done. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 15. Read. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, 
what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Because we would be spiritually dead in the last days, okay? Now jump down to verse 26. Let's see the, recon the world that, he had to, that needed to be reconciled by the blood of Christ. Who's this world? Judah and Israel, Jews and Gentiles. Read verse 26. The book of Romans chapter 11, verse 26. Mm -hmm. And so all Israel shall be saved. Did I think all Israel, all Israel, all Israel shall be saved. Go ahead. As it is written. As it is written. Read. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer. Uh -huh. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. You see that thing? It says, they shall come out of Zion, the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. You see that thing right there? So this whole chapter, Romans 11, is about all 12 tribes of Israel. Now go back to Romans 3. Read verse 23 now. Again. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23. Come on. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now we know who that is talking about. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Who's that talking about now, brothers? Who's that talking about? The 12 tribes. All Judah and Isa. Judah and Isa. And That's the northern the kingdom. Judah and Isa. Okay. Judah and Isa. That's what he's talking about. Read again. Once again. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Wait. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So who's the all that have sinned? All 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That's what this verse is talking about. That's what this whole chapter is making reference to. Judah and Israel, Jews and Gentiles as they are called in the New Testament. You understand? I'm going to end the class right there. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in the remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Most High hand for that. All praises to the Lord. All praises to the Most High. All praises.